I'm Stephen Nichols and I'm with Rutherford Equipment. Rutherford Equipment is a distributor and we carry a lot of different products in the fireplace side of the, of the hearth patio and barbecue industry and also on the, obviously on the grill side of the of hearth patio and barbecue. So what we do is we play with fire. Uh, fireplaces, outdoor grills and cooking equipment, fire features, fire pits, uh, anything that has to do with fire we're involved with it. And that's basically what we do. We, uh, we represent manufacturers that go to market through distri distribution and we're a distributor of upper middle to upper end products and that's that's our that's our place in the in the food chain all right that is 12 gauge 304 stainless steel okay so it's big heavy massive everything about it is the same way this grill is a dual fuel grill so it means that you're going to be able to use cook over gas and straight gas all the way across in the 36 inch version which we're looking at here you have five 20,000 BTU burners how many BTUs is that total? 100,000 BTUs okay um, it's students here all right so <laughs> all right. also in addition to the gas you can use solid fuel like lump charcoal charcoal briquettes wood chunks whatever you want to use and these are your fuel trays. These sit above the gas burners. And again, you don't have to pull that all day. No, thank you very much. Uh, here we go. That's a 12 gauge steel as well. 12 gauge 304 stainless steel fuel tray. All right, so in here will go your solid fuel, just like you know, pieces of lump charcoal or whatever are gonna sit in the, in the fuel tray. Now, you can see in this grill, if you stand up and take a look in here, you're gonna see that in this area of the grill, I've got charcoal going in there right now. The light, the charcoal is lit by the gas, uh, by the gas burners underneath. So all you have to do, if you want to light the charcoal, is fire up the gas burner. About three minutes later, two to three minutes later, the charcoal is running. You can shut off the gas, and you got your charcoal lit. No mess, no fuss. Everything's good. Okay. And on this side, what I'm doing today is I'm cooking over gas. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Cooking over gas on this side, and we're going to charcoal on this side now. The technique that I'm showing you today is called a reverse sear technique. Reverse searing is just a reverse of direct searing. Direct searing is to sear the outside of the, of the meat first and then move it to a lower heat and finish the cooking on the lower heat. What we're doing here, obviously, is we're cooking over lower heat and then we're going to reverse and sear it at the end of the cooking cycle as opposed to the first of the cooking cycle. Now, to do that, one of the really handy things that you can have is a, an instant read thermometer that really works well. And I love the digital kind because they are really, truly instant read. So the meat that we have right now that's cooking on this side is getting to the temperature where we need to sear it. Uh, you want to get it to a, about 115 degrees because in the book they will tell you that medium rare is about 130 to 135, okay? now. Uh, can't cook too close to that target temperature of 130 to 135 degrees over the slower cooking uh, section because which, if you do that then when you sear it it's going to shoot it way over because after it comes off the sear it's going to continue to cook for a while. You have to let it rest for five to ten minutes before you cut it into it anyway or you lose all the juice. So basically what we want to do is get it around 115 no more than 120 before we sear it. So the ones that I've got on here I've been been running for a little while and you see there's a little difference a little variation in the thickness that's 115 right there there's 116 so we're ready basically to, to do the reverse sear with these now I put this lump charcoal in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to supplement it underneath with a lot of gas to try to get the temperature as high as possible in this area but I'll still have the charcoal right now I would guess that that temperature right there is probably only around 700 degrees. I'd like to get it up more around 1,000. When I did this earlier, I had a little bit more fuel in there, but this time I went under because I wasn't really sure what time y'all were going to be out here. So we're taking it a step at a time. I'm going to try to keep these out of the direct heat as much as possible for now, and then they'll be ready to put on there and sear. All right, any questions? Anybody have any questions about what we're doing? Ross, you how to do that? Okay. Here's what you have to remember. You have to remember 10 to 2 and 2 to 10, okay? So when you take your steak, you put it on there, and you're facing 10 degrees. At the, at the, or not 10 degrees, but the 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, thank you. <laughs> so you're at 10 o'clock, okay? So you leave it on there for however long it takes to get the marks on that side. And then your first turn, you're going to make four turns. Well, you make three turns. You're going to have four positions. 
your first turn is going to turn it to 2 o'clock, okay? So you take it, flip it over to 2 o'clock, okay? So 10 to 2, and now your next one is going to go 2 to 10. So how do you do that? Because you're already at 2, all right? Well, after it's set there long enough to get the, your marks on the other side, your next one is going to go bottom to top, hmm. all right? Back to 2, okay? And then you sit there, and for another hour long, and then your last turn is going to be what? Back to 10. Two Back to two. 10, right? And that'll be your final. And what that'll do is it'll give you your cool. cross-hatch marks on your, on your stake. Okay? Cool. Make it look professional. Just like that. Yeah. Dang, that's awesome. Get a close-up of that. That's when they know. That's when they